Hello, everyone. Tony from Hack the Movies here, back with another TV cut of a famous horror movie. This time, it's John Carpenter's The Thing. Some of you might know this version of the movie. It is the basic cable version of The Thing that ran from the 80s to at least 2006. Uh, the copy I have was recorded off TNT. And judging by the lower thirds of things they were advertising, they were still playing this by 2006. I don't know if they still play it today. But yeah, this is one of the more bizarre TV cuts I've ever seen. The first time I saw it would have been in 2003. I was babysitting my cousins at my uncle's place. Uh, it was late at night. The TV guy channel tells me the thing is coming on. And I'm like, well, I love the thing. Obviously, it's a TV version. They're going to cut out the gore, change the cursing. Uh, so I turned it on. And I was bewildered and shocked by the inclusion of a narrator. Antarctica, winter 1982. I was horrified. Uh, yeah, and I haven't watched it since then until recently. Now, if you're familiar with this channel, you probably remember me talking about this when we reviewed the 2011 thing movie it turned into a cult classic throughout sure. the years no and absolutely like, turned into like until like almost when do you think it would turn into a cult classic more into like the 90s the 90s think, yeah. right? yeah. when it starts playing on cable more even late 80s as the, soon as it hits cable you yeah, ever just watch like, the uh the tv edit where there's a narrator in the beginning that's bizarre no and when i realized my co-host had never seen it uh, i realized some other people might have not seen it so i decided to do a little little fun video breaking down what's different in this film. Now, uh, disclaimer, I'm not going to go through every single little detail. Uh, if you go to moviecensorship.com, there's a movie censorship website that can break down the minute by minute, every single minor change. I just want to talk about the bigger changes, uh, the deleted and alternate scenes they included in this cut, uh, and just some of the more funny things. Uh, obviously, they trimmed down gore and changed the cursing, and some of it's funny. Rather not spend the rest of this winter tied to this couch. But without further ado, let's get into the TV version of the thing. Now it starts off similar enough, the spaceship crashing and the, the title screen. And then we get the text uh, for Antarctica 1982. But apparently that's not enough. This is when the narrator comes in. Antarctica, winter 1982. They break up the action of the Norwegians chasing the dog to give us narrated backstories for Windows, McCready, and Childs. None of these stories are interesting, and I'm baffled that someone thought this was a good idea. Windows. Hates being a radio operator. Hates being here. Can't wait to get back to the States. McCready, a tough helicopter pilot, worked for Hughes Aircraft as a test pilot. McCready? Did he just call him McCready? It's McCready. Not McCready. McCray Shadow Legends E. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, let me keep going. Child, a mechanic who went from trade school to the airlines. None better. They put in narration at such weird times, like uh, this scene of Gary shooting the Norwegian. Gary, a 30-year army man who worked up through the ranks to become an officer. Why is that important? Why do we need that detail right now in this moment? It works so much better in the theatrical cut. One little detail that I think is kind of interesting is uh, we're finally told what they're actually doing at U.S. Outpost 31. These men were commissioned by the United States National Science Institute to gather data concerning the physical and natural sciences on the continent of Antarctica. In the theatrical cut, they never really tell you what they're doing there. It wasn't actually important, though. I, I could tell that they were there for some kind of scientific research involving the dogs. I didn't need to know specifically what it was. You just need to know they're scientists uh, for when they start examining the thing. But yeah, I guess it's fun to get a little bit of a, a, a little piece of the puzzle that was missing in the theatrical cut, but overall pretty pointless. Obviously, the scene with the dog thing was going to be cut down because of gore. But even so, I don't think they had to trim out the reveal of the dog thing's face. Uh, that's a pretty iconic shot. And it's just kind of like a frame in this uh, version of the film. It 
It doesn't have the same effect. I also don't like that they don't show the weird flower thing coming out of the thing, jumping at childs. They still have the camera POV movement from it, but we never see the flower thing. So the, the scene is just kind of jarring and weird now. I don't think those were too gory and could have stayed in. I don't understand this change at all. They gave Blair more lines of dialogue describing the thing to all the people in the crew, but it was clearly dubbed in because it's obviously ADR'd, but they uh, never show him actually speaking. They keep cutting to reaction shots while these new lines of dialogue play. It's pretty funny. We got to it before it had time to finish. Finish what? Finish imitating these dogs. If it had succeeded, there'd be three dogs here instead of what you now see. I think we're talking about an organism that imitates other forms perfectly. This extended scene actually does show that Blair lets the crew know that the dog thing is still alive and they react to it. They're scared. In the theatrical version, he kind of keeps that to himself and the one character finds it out later by going through his journal. So I'm not sure when in editing they decided to make this change. But the inclusion of it here is weird because everyone's on edge and then the rest of the film, they're fine until the next thing attack. Uh, it's a weird inclusion here. It should have been cut out. Uh, it was meant to be cut out of the theatrical version. Why they felt the need to put it back in uh, is beyond me. The thing's not dead yet. Still some cellular activity. And they could reproduce at an amazing speed. What's it going to do? Put itself together and come chasing after us? I don't know. Then there's an added scene of McCready questioning the crew about torn up clothes that Knowles found. Uh, you probably remember that scene of Knowles saying who's been throwing their drawers in my kitchen trash can. But now I want my kitchen clean, all right? Germ free. He's questioning everyone about the clothes. He realized they're a size large, uh, which means it could be a number of the people there. And I think this is him saying, hey, we got to keep an eye on each other. One of us must be the thing. But there's a problem here. The scene of Knowles finding the clothes hasn't happened. It just cuts to this. Knowles found this yesterday. Ripped just like the clothing on the Norwegian we brought back. Size large. But then it does happen two scenes later. So they included this extra scene and put it in the wrong place. I don't think they realized the thing could be one of them until they find Bennings later on. So they're putting the movie out of order. For reasons I cannot describe to you. I don't understand this. This is a horrible idea. You don't need this scene. You definitely don't need the scene here. And if you are going to include the scene, put the preceding scene that leads up to it before it, the way it was intended. So then we get an extended scene of Bennings uh, following someone in the kennel area of the camp. Uh, he can't find him. He's looking around. He looks into the kennel and he sees something. We're never shown what he's looking at, but he looks horrified. And then the movie just continues as normal. He never brings it up again. It turns out this whole sequence was leading up to his original death, where apparently he got murdered by someone with a screwdriver, but they cut that out and did a reshoot. But whoever edited this thought it was important to put back into the movie. So we have a lead up to a deleted kill that never gets played. So we get a lead up to nothing. It's a waste of time if you ask me. So Blair now reads out loud the estimates of how bad the infection will be if it gets out. And I'm noticing now that some of this, or maybe all of this, is not actually Wilford Brimley. And if it is, he is phoning it in. Assimilation complete. Cell, dog... Imitation. Entire world population infected 27,000 hours from first contact. It also hit me in the scene with Bennings and Windows in the uh, storeroom. They added a line of dialogue to Windows. And it occurred to me that they were doing this throughout the whole movie. They have weird little lines of dialogue here and there just sprinkled throughout that weren't in the theatrical cut. You have got the keys. I wish they'd left this thing at the Norwegian's camp. I am shocked that they actually showed a shot of the dog with the axe in its neck. I thought for sure that was going to get cropped or cut out altogether. 
obviously the defibrillator scene was going to be cut down because it's super, super gory. But the way it's edited now, I can't tell what's going on. Again, it's another mess of an edit. I mean, there's really, I guess they didn't have much to cut to, to cut around the gore. The movie probably didn't leave a lot of wiggle room for that. But again, it's just another disorienting scene where I'm not sure exactly what's going on. I mean, I know because I've seen the movie a million times, but if this was my introduction to the movie, I'd be very, very, very confused. Clear. The spider head scene is completely omitted. It's not cropped. It's not trimmed down. They don't cut to alternate angles. It's just completely removed from the movie. You gotta be fucking kidding. What do you got in mind, McCready? Also later, when Palmer turns into the thing and runs outside and he falls into the snow, they cut out the scene where Kurt Russell throws dynamite at him. So in the TV cut, it just looks like he explodes for no reason, which is actually a lot funnier. And I almost wish it was in the real version of the movie because I was laughing my ass off. The next part made me scream out loud in my living room. Towards the end of the film, the three survivors go into the basement of the camp to set up charges and blow it up. Uh, and they're picked off one by one by Blair. Now, he's supposed to be stealthy when he takes them out in quiet, like this scene with Gary. For reasons I cannot explain, they threw in dialogue from a previous scene while he's killing Gary, making it seem like he's screaming while killing him. Well, that world's in jeopardy. Nobody gets in or out of here. Wait a minute, wait. Nobody. Well, that world's in jeopardy. Nobody gets out of here. And actually, the line, the whole goddamn world is in jeopardy, isn't even in the theatrical cut. It's only earlier in the TV cut he says it. They also cut to a shot of Blair's face when Knowles is looking around to let you know that Blair is going to kill him. I know Knowles' death is off screen, but I think it's... I think we all assumed that Blair killed him. I don't think we needed any extra shots of Blair staring randomly into space. Uh, we could have pieced it together ourselves, even for the TV cut. So yeah, when the Blair thing comes out of the floor in the theatrical cut, uh, another dog thing comes out of his chest and then Kurt Russell throws the dynamite and blows him up. In this version, they just show the Blair thing's head and they never show the dog coming out of him, but they cut to the dog when the dynamite's thrown. And again, if this is your first time watching, you'd probably be like, where the hell that dog come from? I don't know what's going on. Uh, and it's pretty funny. And of course, you have the funny changing the cursing. And uh, yeah, just play the clip. And finally, the ambiguous ending is completely ruined. Uh, you know, we start to get the scene of Kurt Russell and Childs, you know, saying, uh, we'll wait and see what happens. And then the movie cuts to the dog running. And I think shots of the Norwegian camp from earlier in the film on fire to kind of stand in for U.S. Outpost 31. And we get one final last bizarre narration. Who knows what has come from the galaxy? Who knows what evil lurks in the skies? Beyond God. Watch those around you. Well, who knows what today, tonight, or tomorrow will bring. Now, you might be wondering, what did John Carpenter think of this TV cut? Luckily enough, he actually brought it up in an interview he did with Deadline, uh, I think in like 2014. Now, the context of this was uh, he did some event at the Egyptian theater and he talked about being screwed over by the studios. And he was uh, he was explaining what he meant by that to uh, the interviewer. And he brought up an example, which was this TV cut. And he has here, Sid Scheinberg was a legendary character in the old days. I made the thing at Universal and it didn't do great. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't a giant hit like they wanted. I think he was mad at me because I didn't listen to his creative ideas. So he cut a television version of the thing without even talking to me about it, which had narration on it. 
I actually saw the thing once. It's jaw-dropping. Now, how could he do that? He can't do that, but he did it. That's bad. That's real bad. And he's right. This TV version is awful. It ruins the movie. I mean, it doesn't ruin the movie. You still have the actual version. This reminds me of Halloween 2's TV cut, where there's just so many needless changes uh, that makes a worse film. They're trying to do a toned down censored version of the film, which I have my own thoughts about. I don't exactly agree, but to entertain this, you know, I understand for TV, they have to for whatever reason. But when you start changing the flow of the movie and putting scenes out of order and then lead ups to scenes that were deleted, it just makes a real miserable experience. This should be no one's first experience of the thing. And it probably was for a lot of people. And hopefully the movie was good enough that they eventually saw the real film. But yeah, I would not recommend the TV version of the thing. What I would recommend is checking out our review of The Thing 2011 we did a while back. Uh, that's a real fun time. We really did not like that prequel. We also did an episode recently on the best John Carpenter movies. It's called Is The Thing John Carpenter's Best Movie? And we go through all of John Carpenter's catalog of films. And if you're super hardcore on Patreon, me and my co-host Crystal did a commentary track for John Carpenter's The Thing. You could check that out. And uh, if you're on Twitch... I've actually been playing the thing PlayStation 2 game uh, at the time of this recording. I'm kind of nearing the end of it, uh, and I've been having a lot of fun with that. John Carpenter is actually in that game, which is pretty funny. So, yes, uh, if you're new here, please like, share and subscribe and check out our back catalog. Check out those thing related episodes. And uh, yeah, you're going to have a lot of good. You're going to have a lot of good times here. Uh, and if you're a current subscriber, thank you for watching these uh, shorter videos. It means a lot to me. Also, at the time of this recording, I should have enabled the YouTube join membership option. Right now, it is uh, the same as the $2 tier on my Patreon. I can't figure out how to get the commentary tracks and the exclusive streams split between YouTube join and Patreon. I'm still figuring that out for now. But right now, the YouTube join is the $2 tier from Patreon. So you get all the access you get for the $2 tier on Patreon on YouTube join. Uh, I'll have like members only community posts that'll link you to the bonus videos. So check that out. Uh, but definitely Patreon has more fun stuff like commentary tracks and whatnot. But you have options. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page.